So before starting the video, I would love to thank Relevel for sponsoring this entire tree series. So if you're tired of waiting for companies to respond to your applications through different job portals, the next few seconds are very, very important for you because Relevel by An Academy is India's first hiring platform that can get you a job within a week itself. Yes, all you have to do is to register for the Relevel test and within a week, your interview will be scheduled with India's top companies and the top budding unicorns. So what are you waiting for? Make sure you check out the links in the description and apply for the relevant test because it is free. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So today we will be solving the problem. Find the minimum time that is required to burn a complete binary tree from any given node. Now this question can come up in a lot of fashion. Uh, they might ask you from any given node, from any given leaf node, like they can give you the question as leaf node also. So we will be solving the question for any given node and then you can uh, definitely get the answer for leaf node as well. So let's assume I take the node to be two. Okay, so that's the node I, I take. So this is the node that I have taken. So if I'm asking you the time to burn, so basically this guy will take a time one to burn this, these two guys, like it'll take one second to burn these two guys. After that, it'll take two seconds to burn these two guys. After that, it will take three seconds to burn these guys. So the entire tree, if you burn the node, the entire tree in order to burn will take three seconds. So that is what we want uh, you to return. Basically, you, I want you to return the minimum time that is required in order to burn any given binary tree if you are given a node. So I can say that this problem can be solved using BFS traversal. What if I use a BFS and if this is the node given, assume this is the node that is given to you, that's the node two. Now the node can be directly given to you or the node can be like direct address can be given to you, doesn't matter. So if this node is given to you, what if I apply a BFS algorithm and I say on the first instance, I'll color these two guys. So a BFS, I can work it right. Radially outwards, I'll go like via one distance. Right after this, I'll have these two nodes. So on these two nodes, I'll again go radially outwards. I can go now. And after this, this will color these guys. Again, the next node will be this. This doesn't have any node. And this guy will again go radially outwards. So I can implement a BFS kind of algorithm in order to burn the entire tree. But the problem that I will face is, if the node 2 wants to go in the upper direction, there will be a problem because we have the links that are pointed to downwards. All the links are pointed to downwards. So we can easily go downwards. Like when we are performing the BFS, it can easily go downwards. But in order to go upwards, we're going to face problem. And in order to have upward, like in order to have an upward movement, we have to assign parent pointers. So the first step of the algorithm is to assign parent pointers to this binary tree. So the first step will be to have parent pointers ready. So what I'll do is I'll take a Q and I'll have a, the initial node that is the root node. And we're going to do a level order traversal. So this is the node that we are currently standing at. So let's take this node out. Does this node have a left guy? I can say yes, it has. So I can say two, your parent pointer will be one. Again, you can have some hash map in order to have that ready like I will have a single hash map which says me that the parent of two is one similarly I'll check if one has a right pointer and I see that one has a right pointer so I can say three your parent is one so three's parent has become one now so I can easily mark them right next step whatever where you're left and right just put them into the queue so please make sure you put them into the queue done so once that is done i can say the task for the node one is complete and i'll move the level order traversal to the next node that is node two again do the same step does two have a left does it have a right the two have a left the two has a left that's four so you'll say four your parent pointer is two so four your parent pointer is two right so two is done so you'll take just four and you'll enter it so two is also done because it doesn't have a right next node is three so kindly take three out does three have a left? Yes, that's five. So mark the five's parent pointer to three. Five's parent pointer will be three. Does three have a right? Yes, six. Mark the parent pointer of six to 
3. Mark the parent pointer of 6 to 3. Perfect. So I can say 3 is done. If 3 is done, just make sure you in enter 5 and 6 into the queue data structure. Right? Right after that, you get 4. So the moment you get 4, does 4 have a left? No. Does 4 have a right? Yes. So whichever is the right guy, there's a 7's parent pointer is 4. So please make sure you mark the parent pointer. And at the same time, insert that node into your queue data structure. 4 is done. Next, get 5. Does 5 have a left? No. Does 5 have a right? No. Next, get 6. Does 6 have a left and right? No. Does 7 have a left? No. Does it have a right? No. So I can say I have completed the entire, yes, I have completed the entire traversal. And I've made sure that the parent pointers are ready in some hash map. Now it's time to move ahead to the next step. Now once the parent pointers are marked, it's time to start the BFS traversal. Now if the node is like, if you're given a value 2, just figure out where is this node lying. Like you could have done that uh, using the traversal, like just figure out where is this node or else if you're given this node address, it's absolutely fine. If the node address is given, it's okay. If the address is not given, just figure out where it lies. That can be done using traversal. I'll show you that in the code. So as of now, we have a node 2. So let's again do a BFS traversal. And this time we'll take again a queue data structure. And this time the node 2 will be inserted in this. And at the same time, we are going to have a visited map. Yes, we're going to have a visited map. So let's have a visited map. Why? I will tell you that because we're performing BFS. So just tell them that 2 is visited. Okay, 2 is visited. Let's start the BFS traversal. So as of now, the time is definitely 0, right? So the time is 0. So when I start the BFS traversal, I have this node 2. So currently I have a node 2. Now 2, where can it go? Where, which guys can it burn? Logically, 2 can burn someone who's above that, someone who's on its left, someone who's on the right. Above, left, right, that is what 2 can burn, right? So 2 will burn the above guy and that's nothing but the parent pointer. The above guy is the parent pointer. 2's parent pointer is 1. So it can burn 1. So you have visited 1. It can burn left. That's 4. So you have visited 4. Perfect. Done. Now since 2 has successfully burned someone, so it will take a time of 1. So I have successfully burned the adjacent nodes. So the task of 2 is completed. I'll move to the next. Now in the next traversal, it's very important that you pick up all these two nodes. You do not like because these nodes are burnt at the time 1. So you pick up both the nodes instead of picking only one. Pick up both the nodes and have simultaneous task on that. So on one, one will burn left, one will burn right and one will burn top. So as of now, does one have a top? No, because one doesn't have a parent pointer. Again, proved by the parent map. Does one have a left? Uh, yes, it does have two, but that's already burnt. You can figure that out from the visited array. So again, this will not be burnt. Does one have a right? Yes, indeed. And that's three. So what you can do is you can definitely burn three. You can definitely burn three and mark it as visited. So I can say the task of one is completed. Hence, I can just strike it off from the queue. Now in the next, like in the same iteration, I know we will have four. So we have a four. What I do is again, the same thing. Does four have a uh, top? Yes. Does four have a left? Yes. Does four have a right? Uh, yes. Like it might have. So on four stop, we have two. That's already burnt. So no need to burn it. Does 4 have a left? No. Does 4 have a right? 7. 7 is not burnt yet. So you will burn 7. So put it into the queue. Mark it as visited. So what I've done is, all the guys that were burnt during time 1 have, have burnt their adjacent nodes. Have burnt their adjacent nodes. So 1 and 4 have been completed. So can I say 1, 4, at least burnt someone. Hence, the time will increase to time 2 seconds. In the next iteration, I'll take the next set of nodes which were burnt at time 2. That's the node 3 and node 7. And I'll again perform the same task. 3 can burn the top, the left, the right. So does 3 have a top? Yes, that's 1. But that is already burnt. If you carefully observe, that's already burnt. So we will not burn it. Does 3 have a left? Yes, it has a left. That's 5. So let's burn the node 5. Does 3 have a right? Yes, let's burn it. 
So five will be burnt, six will be burnt. So mark them as visited, put them into the queue data structure. Seven, does it have a top? Yes, that's four, but that's already burnt. Does it have a left? No, does it have a right? No. So can I say, can I say the time two guys that were three and seven have burned their adjacent nodes and this three has burned someone like five and six. So it they burned some adjacents. So if they're burning some adjacents, can I say the time will increase to three? Indeed. And so this is over. Now I'll move to the next set of nodes. And the next set of nodes are six and five. So I have a five, I have a six. So currently when I have a five, the topmost node is three, right? That's already burnt. And you can just figure that out from here, visit it. Five doesn't have a left, doesn't have a right. So five actually doesn't burns anyone, correct? Six, does it have a top? Yes, three, which is already burnt. Six has a left, six has a right, but it doesn't burns anyone. So can I say this five, this six did not burn anyone. Hence, hence the time will no more increase. Hence the time will no more increase because they could not burn anyone, right? Next, if I try to find anyone else in the queue, I don't find it. So the queue is empty. Once the queue is empty, whatever time is stored in your time variable will be your minimal time that's required to burn a binary tree from any given node. If I change the question to leaf node, doesn't matter. You're just going to take parent pointers left, right every time because whether it be a node, whether it be a leaf node, the BFS will still stay the same because I have applied BFS from two. I started and I moved radially outwards. That's BFS. That is what we generally apply. Now you might ask a question, why not DFS? The reason is the tree is burning at the same time, like from node two, it's burning on the same time. So you have to move level wise. Like if you just think this, this is level zero, like time zero, this is time one, time one. So you can just imagine this as a level. And after that, at time two, these two are, are burnt. And at time three, these three, uh, these two are burnt. So it's kind of a level wise movement. First the level zero, then the level one, then the level two, and then the level threes. So that is the reason we cannot use uh, DFS. So as usual, we have the C++ code on the left and the Java code on the right. So we are given the root and as you can see, we are given the integer value of the node, uh, the node that we are looking for, not the address. So what I've done is I've initially created a map of uh, binary tree to binary tree. And I have a BFS, which basically maps these nodes to its parents. So in this BFS, I'll pass the root, I'll pass this map and I'll pass this start. And this ba this BFS does a couple of tasks. One is parent mapping, while the other one is, it returns me the, the node, the node address where this target lies. Because while doing a parent mapping, I was doing BFS traversals. So while traversal, I'll find that address and store it and return. So let's check out the BFS to a parent map function at first. So what I've done is I've declared a queue and I pushed the root. That's the starting point. And at the same time, I have kept a resultant node so that I can uh, store the address of the start. Right after that, I start iterating. I do a level order traversal. I get the node, right? And if this node is equivalent to the start, like the node that you're looking for. So I store that node. So during the traversal, if any time I find that node, uh, which is containing the value start, I just store its address. And after that I pop. And if there is a left, if there is a right, what I do is I map, I say left, your parent is node. And at the same time, I push it to the queue. Right, your parent is node, push it into the queue. This is how the level order traversal will complete. So after this line, the target node is what, where the start node will be. And the BFS will make sure that this map contains all the nodes parents right after that i have one function find max parent find max distance where i pass this parent map and i pass this target node so since i have the target node the address i pass it so as of now i have this find max distance correct so what do i have i have the parent map i have the target node now initially i have taken the queue so i'll just push on the queue like i just push on the target into that 
right after that i have this visited note correct and what i'm doing is i'm marking visited as one so i've marked visited as one after this i've kept the timer so initial timer is zero right after this i'll start iterating so if you remember whatever is the target note you have to keep that into the queue i have to mark that into the visited right after that i start iterating in the queue i take the size so if you remember first we had one then we like sorry first we had two then we had one and uh, like if i remember well we had one and four so we will iterate for one and four and after that whatever set we had we iterated for it so that's why we are running directly on the size we're running directly on the size and if it's one and four we'll take one and four and do simultaneous works on that that's why we're running on the size so we'll take the note we'll pop it and what we check is does it have a left and is that not visited if it is i will burn it so kindly burn it that is marking visited and push it into the queue similar i'll do for right check it burn it and push it into the queue check it if it exists like map of node does it exist what does that mean does the parent pointer exist and if it exists does that parent pointer like is it already visited if it is not then burn it and push it into the queue so these are three left right and top i burn it and push it into the queue and if any one if i'm burning any adjacent node i am marking a flag as one i am marking a flag as one like if i'm burning any one and at the end at the end if the flag is marked as one that means i have burned someone who was adjacent to me hence i'll do a maxi plus plus that means i'll do a timer plus plus at the end i can return the timer which i can ultimately return as my answer time complexity of this method so what i'm doing is i'm using a bfs to map parent that's a level order traversal which is going to take a big of n plus i'm again using a bfs kind of a function which is burning the adjacent nodes so that's a big of n so i can just summarize like i can uh, write it as big of n i'm assuming i'm assuming that the map works at big o of 1 like i'm assuming map is working at big o of 1 depending on what time complexity you're assuming map to work at then you can just uh, make it n log n or whatever you want to make it and the space complexity is again you're using an external map you're using an external queue and similar stuff so i can just uh, summarize it to be big o of n so that is what the time complexity and the space complexity will be in order to get the minimum required time to burn a binary tree from any given node so i hope you have understood the entire explanation as well as the code just in case you did please 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 make sure you like this video because it took a lot of efforts to uh, make this entire tree series also if you wish you can definitely drop in a comment that will keep motivating me to make such further series also if you are new to the channel please do consider subscribing because i'm going to bring in such more series in the upcoming future as well with this uh, let's wrap up this video let's meet in the next lecture bye bye take care